Detroiters, the last days of December mean winter. Darkness after work, paralyzing wind off the river, the stop and go, slip and slide of freeway driving. In the Motor City and its suburbs, winter is a hassle, a struggle with snow and cold and ice. There's no place more dismal than the big city caught in a big freeze. On the doorstep of the new year then, come with me to the North Country, to a place where they measure snow in feet, not inches, to a small town in the Upper Peninsula in winter. For some, it's the most beautiful land in America, a vision of big timber and burbling brooks. Just about everyone in Michigan, every once in a while, dreams about a place in the Upper Peninsula. Is there such a place? More than 500 miles to the north, across the big bridge, out past Iron Mountain, so far away it's even in a different time zone. On a mountain that faces the morning sun stands Crystal Falls and its people. One time somebody asked my dad how steep the mountains were. He said, their mountains were so steep you had to hold the goats up by the hind legs so they could eat. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, hunt, do a lot of ice fishing, and uh, quite a bit of trapping when the prices are good. I think maybe we work a little bit harder here for the same amount of money. If you did make the same amount, you'd have to work much harder here. Some days I miss very much going to museums, concerts, and plays and things, but uh, I think basically I feel very positively about living here in a small town in the Upper Peninsula. Why come to Crystal Falls? Well, it's a long way from anywhere, so people choose to live here, as their fathers did before them, coming from Finland, Sweden, Italy, and Germany, to work in the mines, to cut logs in the woods, to hunt, and to fish. Fewer than 2,000 people live in this town today, and more than half of them are retired. Still, there's vitality here, a kind of quiet satisfaction, and especially character. The main street of Crystal Falls is Superior Avenue. There's a bakery there that boasts the creamiest eclairs for 100 miles a drugstore, a VFW post, and a half dozen taverns. There's a weekly newspaper called the Diamond Drill, but the daily news is freshest in a barber shop called Bud's. I came here to get a haircut once in a while, but mostly I stop in here to get the news, where the fish are biting, where to get the deer, everything else, where the partridge are. It's better than a newspaper because we can come in here daily and get the news <laughs> right on the spot. I shoot the breeze a little bit, and you hear all kinds of stories in here. I, you hear everything here, you know. <laughs> everything. I don't say much. I'm kind of, I'm a kind of a listener. <laughs> I see. Uh, the secret here may just be to sit and listen. If, yeah, really. And then I find out from both parties where the birds are. See. You asked what we do here for excitement and pastime. Well, we do here what the people down the city save money up all year to come up here spend the week's vacation. We do it all year. Uh, I lived in Flint, and the things I like to do, you just can't do in Flint. Uh, I'm not much for bowling or anything, and I, and I enjoy the outdoors, so why not? At least when I get a, in this type of work, you don't get a lot of time off, so when you get a little time off, I'm here where it's at. Courthouse sits at the head of Superior Avenue, a crown atop Crystal Falls with polished pillars and rough stone arches dug from nearby quarries. Crystal Falls has been the seat of Iron County since 1889, but none of this would be here if it hadn't been for a poker game and a whole lot of whiskey. What happened was many years ago, the courthouse used to be in Iron River. And many years ago, I guess during a poker party or something, uh, 
They got the other ones drunk and then they snuck over to Iron River and they saw, stole all the records from Iron River and brought them over to Crystal Falls. And that's, that's the true story. That's in all the county seat is in Crystal Falls and uh, there's bitterness and they won't let anybody forget about it. Sheriff Harold Gill is a native son of rural Amasaw and he enforces the law on the roads and highways of Iron County. Unemployment has, that has a big reason for being in jail, a lot of them. But the larcenies I was talking about is they try to steal they try to steal stuff so that they're hoping, uh, hoping they can sell it and make money to live on. Yet some of the worst troublemakers in Iron County have four legs. In the fall of the year and in the spring of the year, it's terrible. It's, uh, I think we had, I think last year we had uh, around 80 some car deer accidents. In Crystal Falls, people look upon the mayor as a person that they can go to, call up when they have problems. Lawrence um, Hegstrom teaches fifth and sixth grade social studies at the local school, but part of the time he's mayor, a victor in every city election since 1968. I'm related to a whole lot of people in town. So when someone asks me, how come you've been the mayor so long, uh, I just tell them, when you're related to that many people, who would dare run against you? They know they don't have a chance before they start. I would say here that basically we're quite friendly, um, hardworking to a certain degree, still have pretty strong family ties, real strong family ties, love the area and basically don't want to ever leave it. Dad came over in 1913, and he took the shop over. In 1922, he sent for my mother, and she came over. They got married here in town. He worked till he was 76. He worked, he, he, as a matter of fact, the night he died, he was up the camp, mucking around with oil drums, and came home and died right here in the shop. Emil Bichigo has been fixing shoes since he was 10 years old. His shop is just the same as when his father worked here, but the town around it has changed. There was buildings next door, you know, buildings across the street. Of course, where that big Malkins is down there used to be a skating rink. Oh, yeah, that's a lot different. Mostly all retired people here now, you know. People you don't even know, they moved up from the city, they come to a small town and retire. Sparty, <laughs> Sparty, that was the one I got him from, Schmite, Fred Schmite from Kingsford, you remember that Sparty? That was a good dog, and then when I left here, I left here, that was around in the Oh, in the middle 30s or around there, and then I give them to, to a neighbor to keep, and then I guess I car kill them, but that was a real good little dog. Tuffy Dalpra's favorite thing. rabbit dog, remembered as keenly as famous woodsmen and hunters of the past. Born 79 years ago, Tuffy was a printer's devil by age 13 and carried ladles of whiskey to the loggers who rode the big rafts through town. And then those logs, you know, when they went down the river, they were going this way here, and them fellas were jumping there and poking them with them long uh, peavies, they called them. Them fellas had to jump from one log to another to keep them logs moving so they didn't jam up. And if they ever fell in there and them logs come together, I never heard of anybody drowning, but that was uh, that they had to watch themselves because uh, them logs, when they're going down the river, they're going back and forth this way here. <laughs> Tuffy Dolphra was a boy, Crystal Falls was a boom town. Big hotels on Superior Avenue, an opera house, and count them, 32 saloons. Logging built Crystal Falls, but mining made the town rich.
The name of the county is Iron. The next township over is Hematite. The roads are named Rock Crusher and Bristol Mine. Iron ore almost jutted out of the ground here. Beginning in the 1880s, men went down into the mines to follow the tributaries of the Menominee Range, one of the five great rivers of iron in the northern Great Lakes region. For most of a century, every household in Crystal Falls knew a miner, or a dead miner. There was nothing else to pick from around here them days. That, that was the easiest place to get a job. But they were hiring them every day, they were hiring men. And men at them days were worthless. So they tell you, come around tomorrow, maybe somebody get killed today. Did you ever get a job like that? Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. You're killing them every week. As recently as 1969, men went down into the Bristol mines searching for the red ore called iron. Two shifts provided jobs for more than 600 men within walking distance of downtown Crystal Falls. Today, the shafts are filled with cement, the sheds are rusting in the snow, and the mines are closed forever. With the disappearance of the mines, you know, at one time, a lot of your kids that graduated from high school went directly into the mines because they were good paying jobs, good fringe benefits, and that's gone now. It's, it's a low grade ore that we have here, and they're getting better grade ore from uh, overseas, and uh, they just can't compete, so they're, they're done. But the trees still grow and fall. The forests are the farms of the North Country, and winter is harvest time. Even with eight inches of fresh snow on the ground, even with a temperature at four degrees above zero, the workday began at dawn for Bob Wolosinski and Jim Funk. Wolosinski is 43. He cut his first tree when he was 12, coming into the woods with his dad, skidding logs with horses. Now he topples great trees in minutes. His saw needs a gallon of oil every day just to cool the working chain. Funk pulls the logs and poles from the woods with a modern lumberjack's mechanical horse, a skidder, $67,000 of articulated power. A tree like this is uh, what we normally call a widow maker because of that dead cedar hanging in there. It's probably tied into the branches, so when, it, when you cut the hemlock down, the cedar has a good chance of coming down and falling on you. So what are you going to do then? Well, I'm going to cut it down fast and run. <laughs> Waiter! Trucks weighing more than 60 tons rumble through the woods on roads of ice and packed snow. Loggers get paid by the pound for pulp. Every load is carefully weighed before the logs head for the chipper to make paper and tissue. The logger's day ends in a local tavern where the tools of their fathers hang on the walls, a place where you can get beer and brandy and change for a dollar. You're out there, you're free, you know. You can, if you want to stop and have a cigarette or if you want to stop and have coffee, nobody's going to tell you, hey, get back to work, you know, because we get paid for what we do. I worked in factories. And there it depends on how long you've been in the union, who's got the seniority. The young guy, he does the work, and the old guy, he gets more pay. You can go out there and sit on a machine all day, and you're still going to get your $14 an hour. The machine breaks down, you're still going to get paid all day. Most of your, that's the way most of your unions operate. But logging is different. Logging is definitely different. If you don't get that wood out there, you don't get your paycheck. Simple as that. 
Oh, when I first started, so I got the proper clothes, there was a couple mornings there I thought I had to be crazy. <laughs> it gets cold out there. I don't care what they say. If the skitter starts, we work. That's the way we always, that was our rule. If the skitter starts, we work. Funk's specialty is heavy machinery repair. Wolosinski is in the excavating business during the summer. The jobs change with the seasons. We're kind of versatile. That's one thing about the UP. You have to be kind of versatile if you want to survive. You can't just depend on one thing. The thermometer was stuck near zero on a wintry Saturday when a half dozen friends gathered for a morning of rabbit hunting at a camp just a mile from downtown. What are the features of a good uh, rabbit dog? Well, one that's uh, what you call a hard-nosed dog is one that doesn't quit once it's on a trail. Some, some dogs you get to... They'll go for maybe a half a block, turn around and come back. Art Villeneuve is a mason who puts bricks and blocks together in the summer. But for almost half the year, he tends 14 cows he keeps at the edge of town, fattens three hogs, cultivates a huge garden, and keeps four big freezers full of venison, walleye, pheasant, fish, and rabbit. Why rabbits? Well... <laughs> I don't know. It's more or less, I guess, just for the sport of it. They are good eating and everything, but uh, it's just the idea of getting the dogs out in the woods and listening to them howl. And in order of hunting purposes, I think probably rabbit hunting is more exciting than deer hunting as on a whole because you get more action. You see more game. and uh, Usually we get a quite a few rabbits, but like I say, today I don't know what we're going to do because it is, you can see how light this snow is and how deep it is. And when it's cold, the rabbits, they burrow, and then there's like there's a hole here, see, like that log there. And it'd be hard, the dogs can come right on by here and the rabbit won't even move. Come on, Bob. come on. Despite the cold and the fresh snow, Randy Hegstrom, the youngest hunter, got his rabbit. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Shotguns and the voice of beagles are common to the woods around Crystal Falls. But out on the edge of town, in a house first made of logs, there comes a different sound. It was fun for a few months to sit around and practice by myself on etudes and excerpts, but then I began to miss playing with other people. So uh, I looked around for something that was happening in classical music and it wasn't happening. So I decided I'd better do it myself if it was going to happen. I've started a chamber music ensemble called the Timberland Chamber Players. And Tamara Fields was tutored in Boston. She taught students at the Liggett School in Gross Point. She's lived here six years now, and her husband has just been elected prosecutor. Tamara Fields is no longer a stranger in Crystal Falls. When you first move here, it would be v it's very easy to feel that everybody knows everybody else or everyone's related to everyone else and and feel a little left out of things but it seemed as though um, it wasn't long before we we felt very much at home here tamara fields was able to bring some of the culture of the city to crystal falls but for most of the men here the heart of culture in the north country is in the camp oh, bear oh gee look at that on a bear have fun with you look, look what, what you caught me look, I have look where you me. camp is the place where men and more rarely women go to share a meal who says he wanted a beer have a few beers and brandies to play some cards to laugh to argue to remember the first time they took me snowmobiling was 45 below when we left Amasu. <laughs> Now you're talking about hunting, you know, you, when you're talking about hunting, are you talking about 24-hour uh, hunting or 8-hour hunting or 2-hour hunting? <laughs> I was 2-hour hunting. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing, if Jesus Christ 
ran on the, on the Democratic ticket, he'd be an atheist. <laughs> this is the regular weekly meeting of the Crystal Falls Culinary Society. Folks in town call it the Wednesday night chow hounds. It's not just the food that brings you all out here on the Wednesday night, is it? You know, we never really thought much about it, I guess, but uh, I don't think so. I think it's 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 a companionship that uh, that's right. The that's fellowship right. that there's something about it. Uh, if he was hurting, man, we'd, we'd we'd be helping him out. But if, if if I was hurting, he'd be helping me out. You know, it, it's uh, we know our neighbors. You know, we take care of them. Good neighbors and good friends sometimes argue too, especially if the subject is money. I'll tell you, when I worked at the mine, we got four dollars and twenty-five cents eight hours. Can't go that way. A day. Oh, yeah, you gotta go that way. I'm from the old spot. Yeah. There's a lot of people that find jobs, but they want too damn big pay for it, and nobody can afford to hire. Well, I'm not a strong union. Never had well, what, what would be a fair? What would be a fair? Anything to make a living instead of going on relief. Well, I say, what would you? What would you say would be a fair hourly wage? I don't give a damn if I want to work for five. I don't want no union to tell me that That's I gotta right. have okay. ten. Wait, five. I don't want no union okay, to tell me that I gotta work. Five. Everybody works for five dollars an hour. Fine, I agree with that. Four. Beautiful. Put all the unemployed in Iron County to work for five dollars an hour. Excuse me, pay. Come on, get jobs. If I had work, I get them. Where? The rule of the camp is tempers must quickly cool, and they do. I guess the camp is a religion, and uh, those of us who were born here, I think we were born with it. <laughs> it's in our genes or something because it's hard to explain, but everyone either has to have a camp or be part of a camp. A great many people in Detroit and Warren and Birmingham dream of little towns like this one and live some part of their dream in a long week's vacation in a lakeside cottage or a cabin deep in the woods. But always, at summer's end, they go home. The test of character in the Upper Peninsula is winter, and the people of Crystal Falls take that test every winter, every day. He, he was in town and he was drinking heavy. And uh, Ed Casagranda from a logging camp came down and got him to take him up to the camp so he could cut logs and sober him up. And he brought, brought a little whiskey up from, for him. That, that's not too many years ago. Oh, quite a few. But he went up there and he got drunk and he walked out of the camp. That was up north of Amasa, which lake up there. And that's the last they ever saw him. They never found a hide, hair, or nothing. 